Also changed teams late in his career, questioned Arian's approach in a radio interview this week. True or not, I think the last person you want to call out after the first game of the year is Tom Brady. Now, maybe they, they had a mutual truce going into the game, going into the season. Hey, you know, I'm going to be hard on you. I want the guys to know that we're going to treat you the same, even though technically I'm not. So are you okay with it? If, if they have that truce, great. If not, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. That's what Brett Favre said yesterday. Arians was asked again about the relationship with Brady. Here's what he said. Yeah, we, Tom and I are fine, so I, I don't really care what other people think. <laughs> so it's just what he and I think. And, uh, you know, we, we left the stadium fine. We showed up today fine. So <laughs> there ain't nothing to talk about. I think there is something to talk about. So let's talk about it with Jenna Lane, who covers the Buccaneers for us. Jenna, we're one week in, and already we have this going on. What, what are you seeing as you're there every day in the relationship early on between Brady and Arians? Yeah, Greeny, I've had a lot of folks express to me concern that there could be potential friction between Tom Brady and Bruce Arians after Arians' comments post-game. I've gotten no indication of any such friction. I describe their relationship as a healthy one. I've also gotten no indication that Tom Brady wants to be handled with kid gloves. I think we all kind of tried to after the game, but he told me, hey, I've lost games before. I've got to play better. I think the difference here is the fact that everything is out in the open. Tom Brady is used to hard coaching, but he's not used to it being made so public. Bill Belichick kept everything close to the vest. But with Arians, he's already told us before, yeah, I cursed Tom Brady out for throwing the ball in a walkthrough. He's told us before, yeah, Rob Gronkowski needed to come to training camp in better shape. He's got to get in better shape. He told the media in Arizona, Calais Campbell should have had five sacks and not just three. So anybody that plays for him knows that he is going to be very open and honest with the media, and he's going to tell them exactly what's on his mind. I would also say this. This is a locker room where you don't have to worry about losing the player's confidence in the quarterback. These are players that grew up with posters of Tom Brady on their walls. And so when Arians is critical of him publicly, these guys are going to step up all around him. They're going to do whatever it takes to protect him. Right, Jenna Lane, great to have you back this week. Thank you very much, and we'll see you after they play week two, which obviously will create a lot of conversation. And so I want to go to D. Wood, because we did touch on this a little bit earlier this morning, but without the perspective there, which I think was important, and we did not have your perspective. You played with Tom at the very beginning yeah. of his career. What do you make of this, and Brett Favre jumping in the middle of it? What do you think? Well, I think, first of all, I think coaches handle quarterbacks very differently. I think Brett Favre is speaking to that, um, just the way that maybe how coaches and Green Bay for most of his career handled him. Um, anyone that's been in New England knows that Tom Brady has been in a 20-year mental meat grinder. Literally every, every practice, every meeting, every game, Bill Belichick puts you through the mental gymnastics that makes most players uncomfortable. And Tom has the highest expectations of himself. Now the difference is Bruce Arians, he'll air it out to everyone to hear. But if you think that Tom Brady is going to get sensitive off of the things that, that Bruce Arians say to the media, then you don't know Tom Brady. This is the same guy who was a six-round pick, 199th pick, and still plays with a chip on his shoulder. So nothing that Bruce Arians is going to say is going to tick Tom Brady off or it's going to make, make him fall apart emotionally. Okay, I like that. The, the, the counter to that, I guess, is that it was my perspective that at least one of the reasons he left New England was because he was tired of being criticized all the time by his coach, and now here he is being criticized by his coach. Uh, Lewis Riddick, let me ask you your perspective. When you hear Brett Favre say he may be barking up the wrong tree, what do you think? Yeah, I, I get where Brett's coming from, and Greeny, I also get where you're coming from as far as, you know, the talk about did Tom want to go have a change at this point in time in his career because he wanted to be approached differently. He wanted to be corrected differently. He wanted to have more input on game plans. He, w he just wanted a different feel, a different, a different environment around him. And most people go, well, that can't be the kind of environment he wanted. He can't surely have said, I want to go down to Tampa Bay so Bruce Arians can talk to the media about how I didn't play well. I don't think that's what people had in mind, you know, for Tom Brady. And I think that's what's kind of catching us all by surprise here a little bit. Like, whoa, 
Is this going to be sitting well with the guy who's won six Super Bowls and played nine of them? Is that the kind of is that the kind of change that you were looking for? But I think Damian also is on to something here, which is this is probably one of the most mentally resilient players, despite the fact that he's had so much success. One of the most mentally resilient, tough players that this game has ever seen, simply because Tom made himself into who he is. Nothing was given to him. And obviously, Bruce isn't giving him anything down there either. He's giving it to him straight and giving it to him honestly. And that's something that, that he has been used to his entire career. I can speak to those mental gymnastics, Woody. I remember them like they're yesterday. I haven't played pro football in a long time, almost 21 years. And I still can remember some of those meetings and some of the demands that Bill places on you like it was simply this morning, like it was just a couple hours ago. So, I, I, I mean, I get it. He's not going to crack. This, does, this is good conversation, though, as far as is this what we really expected to hear out of Bruce Arians in the relationship concerning Tom Brady? I think what we really want to see now is how's Tom, how's Tom going to react to this in week two? How's the team going to react to it in week two? Because that's where the conversation is going to come back to. Can he help this football team win and get them to the playoffs? Because it's either playoffs or bust with this team. It's simple as that. It's playoffs exactly. or bust. Otherwise, was any of this worth it? Me. It, why you might think that maybe he doesn't want to be talked to like this by Bruce Arians, but there's a difference between the situations in New England and the situation down in Tampa. Bruce Arians <laughs> may be publicly saying that he's not playing well, but Bruce Arians also has given him two Pro Bowl receivers, uh, two Pro Bowl caliber tight ends, and a bunch of running backs. So it's a little different if someone's criticizing you on one end and also giving you everything you ever dreamed of on the other end. If you think back to how he was in New England last season, uh, he was getting probably criticized and ripped apart in those meetings and privately, and then going out on the field and looking around and saying, but I don't got no help. So I think it's a little easier for him to be able to, for him to, be able to accept Bruce Arians' criticism. And I think he also knows, like he's, he's tough mentally. He knows that Bruce isn't really talking to him. Bruce is talking to the rest of the team and using him to do so because that message rings loud and clear in that locker room when he says Tom isn't doing what he has to do. It's a lot louder than if he comes out there and picks some offensive lineman or receiver and says they need to get better. He plays his first home game this weekend for whatever that's worth. A home means such a different thing in this era against the Panthers as you see. Next order of business is Brady's old team and this to me is very important. Patriots Seahawks this week and Cam Newton Going up against the Seattle defense, the Patriots called 13 designed runs for Cam last week, and he wound up rushing the ball a total of 15 times in the game. Now juxtapose that with the way Pete Carroll, the coach in Seattle, sees his own defense. He says, I love the way we were able to show first time out how we want to play. I'm glad the message was clear. We're coming to knock the hell out of you when you play us. That was fun. It did seem like a bit of a throwback, and so that got me to thinking, Bill Belichick may be the greatest coach of all time. He doesn't need advice from me, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. Here's my unsolicited advice. I've seen Jamal Adams play. I watched his entire career with the Jets, and I'm telling you right now, if you run Cam Newton 15 times this game, he won't play week three. This experiment will be over immediately. Everyone is a plan until they get punched in the face, and Jamal Adams is the one who does the punching. So my advice is five carries max for Cam this week, unless you want Jamal Adams to put a quick end to all of this success in New England. D. Wood, why are you laughing? <laughs> because we're sitting here talking about the GOAT coach and, and, and Bill Belichick, and, uh, you know, we're questioning, you know, what he... What he it is unsolicited advice. What I'm saying is I, I, I worry about Cam Newton running into Jamal Adams and, and that putting a very quick end to the way this... Oh, let me ask you a so, question. Yeah. Have you seen how big Cam Newton is? I, I understand have. Jamal Adams is a hell of a player, but let me tell you something. That's a tank at quarterback for the New England Patriots. So if they collide, I guarantee he's dishing out more than he's taking. I understand that. I guess what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is, with all the conversation about whether this is sustainable or not, right. there, there, isn't a, there isn't a game that will concern me a lot more than this one because Jamal will be coming with a full head of speed when mm -hmm. he sees Cam. I would anticipate that being part of the defensive plan, and I would imagine Jamal Adams is looking forward. Uh, here's, here's, what I, here's what I'll say to that, and, and, and Lewis can speak to this as well, as well as Dominique. Patriots are game plan, game plan specific type team. Right. What you saw week one might not necessarily be anything what you see in week two. Right. Um, so I think a lot of people have gotten up in arms about, oh man, they ran the ball that many times. 
Well, if you see a weakness with an opponent, the Patriots are going to go and exploit it. I don't know what they figured their, their weakness, the Seattle Seahawks defense weakness is, but I guarantee you Bill Belichick would do whatever he can to exploit that weakness. I get that, and, and that's true, but I wonder how much of it is about the weakness they saw in the defense and how much of it is about the weakness of their own offensive passing game, mm -hmm. and they figure this is the best way they can go about it. Dominique, your sense of how much you expect to see Cam run the ball this week, Sunday night in Seattle. I think the point is the Patriots aren't deciding how much Cam runs the ball. The defense is deciding how much Cam runs the ball. These are often RPOs in zone reads. So what the defense gives you, that tells you whether to throw the ball, run the, hand the ball to the running back, or keep it. So if they're going to keep running this type of offense, they won't be able to predict or control how many attempts that Cam Newton gets. And I think it's a smart offense to run when you have the talent that they have on the offensive side of the ball. So if it just so happens that teams force Cam to carry the ball, then Cam's going to have to carry the ball. And I understand that everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. But damn, Cam Newton is a real, real big face to be punching time and time again. You might break your knuckles. I understand that, but he has also missed a lot of time because he's gotten hit more than any quarterback in NFL history. Shefty, what is your sense? All the conversation, all the questions that came out of Foxborough after week one is, that looked great, but is it sustainable? What is your sense? Listen, I think that they, again, to these guys' points, are going to do what works for them, find that weakness. Again, Jamal Adams has gone up against the New England Patriots six times in his career. He's 0-6. So the Patriots have figured out a way in the past to foil him before, and they'll be trying to do the same thing Sunday night. Cam Newton, I think, with the Patriots is somebody that they, it's a new toy. They've never had a toy like this in the last 20 years. So they're going to do things that we have not seen from this Patriots offense. They're doing things that, again, were not in the playbook. And if that means running at Jamal Adams, throwing over Jamal, what? They're not. I don't think they're concerned about that. I think Bill Belichick this morning said Russell Wilson is maybe the most underrated player in the game. That might be more of a concern. Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator, he'll figure it out. Bill Belichick will figure it out. They'll be fine on Sunday night. You know what happened to me once when I was a kid? I got a toy and I liked it so much, I played with it so much the first day it broke. And that, that, that is my concern with what happens. Neek, go ahead. I see the look on your face. What? I mean, you need to get some higher quality toys because Cam Newton is better than whatever rock'em, sock'em garbage you was playing with. You had a, the little vibrating football mat. Like, what do you have? So, or you probably, you probably had a, a wooden horse with a string on it. That feels like, feels like a Greenies toy. Yes, I don't know. That, that, that was a toy from 1947. <laughs> I don't know how old you think I am, but I appreciate the concept. I, okay. didn't, know Greedy, I didn't know Greedy could break dominoes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's